Hi everyone and welcome to the video. This is going to be about how to dress your baby or toddler for a cozy, comfortable sleep in the winter time. If you'd like to see my video on how to dress a swaddled baby for sleep in the winter, I'll leave a link in the description box below. So, if you're new here, my name is Alex. I'm a mum of a 16 month old baby boy. Well, he's not a baby anymore, toddler. And we live in Sydney. So the temps here can get down to about 10 degrees Celsius in winter at night inside the room, which is pretty chilly. And that's why we kind of have to have a game plan when it comes to how to dress him in winter so that he's nice and cuddly and cozy and warm, but not too warm. I'm guessing that you, like us, are or were feeling kind of confused or very, very confused about what you meant to dress your baby in. So I'm gonna help you to hopefully get your head around what to do. Just a couple of disclaimers first though. Obviously I'm not a sleep expert. I am just a mum and this is how we've gone about things and what's working for us. Um, we do follow like SIDS guidelines and things like that to make sure that we're sleeping our son in the safest way possible. So just a quick note on SIDS, um, one of the risk factors is overheating. You kind of have to think about what you're doing. It's not just a case of throwing them in a tracksuit with a pile of blankets or a doona. So the first thing and the easiest thing to do is to look at the sheets on the bed. And you're only gonna have a one sheet and that's the fitted sheet. So you wanna get either a flannelette sheet or a jersey cotton sheet, just like this one I have here. You know how co normal cotton sheets get really cold in winter. So yeah, just make sure that they've got a nice surface to sleep on that isn't gonna get super chilly in the winter. So now I'm just gonna talk about what to actually dress them in to go to bed. And then I'm gonna talk about heating and things like that. So let's talk about sleeping bags. Now, the easiest thing that you can do to sleep your baby in winter is to buy a sleeping bag or a couple of sleeping bags to rotate between. You don't wanna be sleeping them. Certainly when they're a baby or a young toddler, no blankets, no dunas, nothing loose that they could get um, trapped under or anything like that. The great thing about sleeping bags is that a lot of them are TOG rated. So you wanna get the sleeping bags that are rated for their warmth because those sleeping bags actually come with a guide that will look something like this or this they come with a guide and they tell you exactly what you need to dress the baby in under their sleeping bag so that they're warm for a particular temperature. Let me just explain that a little bit further. There's a lot of sleeping bags that aren't TOG rated. I'm not a fan of those personally only because, well for one thing, they're often filled with polyester which um, isn't a breathable fabric and the other thing is they don't come with a guide to tell you what to dress them in so you don't really know if it's too cold too hot or what so I would spend a few extra pennies and get one of the bags that will actually tell you what temperatures the bag is suited for this is the guide that will come with a love to dream sleeping bag or swaddle sorry let me just show you here so down the temperature, sorry, down the side here, it has the temperature. And then across the top, it has their 0.2 rated bag, which is one, a light one for summer. It's got a one tog, which is um, a, a little bit heavier. And then it's got a 2.5. They also do have a 3.5. It tells you the temperature down here. So you look and you might see, okay, if it's this temperature, what do I need to dress them in? It's really that simple. It tells you exactly what you need to dress them in. And this is a, a different one from Ergo Pouch and their guides actually come with a little room thermometer. Although I know a lot of people have, will probably have um, baby monitors that have the temperature in the room. You could use that as well. So let's look at a couple of sleeping bags. So this is a 2.5 tog sleeping bag. It's by Grow Bag. 
and this one is sleeveless. This is a 3.5 tog bag from um, Ergo Pouch and I love this one because it actually has the sleeves for a little bit of warmth on their arms. Okay, so with regards to what type of sleeping bag you have, I guess it's going to depend on how cold it gets in your house um, overnight. We've found that, so for example, with this bag, which is kind of good for autumn going to spring temperatures, it's enough to have him in a Bonds one, Zippy Wonder Suit with sleeves in this. But for the cold nights, we like that this has the um, arms so that his arms can have a little extra warmth. And they're nice and stretchy on this one, so it's not hard to get over the top even if he's already wearing a wonder suit. Now, I know that Love to Dream sell arm warmers, like attachable ones. I didn't like them. We had a pair of them last year and found that they were quite hard to get on. They were a bit too small to, and fiddly to get on, so I didn't really like those. But we are really, really liking this, um, this sleeping bag. Now, if you do have a, a bag without sleeves, you can still um, layer the arms. You could wear like a Bonds Wonder Suit and then a flannelette um, a loose flannelette top over the top of that and then the bag um, you could even add the flannelette top over the top of the sleeping bag later in the night if they happen to get up and they were cold but this is if you aren't using heating so let's talk about heating now because there's two ways that you can go about things in, in winter Previously, until about two weeks ago, we weren't using heater and we were having to look at the temperature each before each nap or before each sleep and decide what to put Jed in to sleep. The problem with this is that it's okay for naps, but for overnight in Sydney, the temperature can drop by about six degrees from bedtime at 7 p.m. and then at 4 a.m. it could, you know, it could be 18 at 7 p.m. and then it could be 12 at 4 a.m. So the dilemma there is do you dress them for the temperature that it is at 7 p.m. or do you dress them for the temperature that it's going to be at 4 a.m. If you're in that boat and you're deciding not to use a heater, personally what I would do is to dress them a little bit warmer than the temperature that it is going to bed. But I wouldn't dress them for a full six degrees warmer because, colder, sorry, because then they might be overheated for a good portion of the night. And when you're overheated in bed, it's difficult to sleep and you don't want to put, the, put them at any risk either. So in that case, you might have to add a, a layer later in the night. You might have to like change their sleeping bag if they wake up and you see that the temperature's dropped you might have to move them into a warmer sleeping bag or you might have to add an extra layer of clothing so these are things that you can do but um i think it's if you if the temperature is going to get if the temperature is going to drop that much it's probably going to be easier for you to use a heater in the room but that's a personal call. But let's talk a little bit more about heaters and when you might want to use a heater. So just from observation of room, the room temperature lately, I feel like if the room drops below about 16, certainly 15, if it's getting like a bit icy and cold in the air, anything where you're gonna have like a cold head I think you need to have, I think it might be comfortable for the baby to have a heater in their room. But um, just a side note, you don't need to judge a baby's coldness on if their hands are cold or if their head is cold. The important thing is if, is if their torso is warm. So the way that you tell if they're warm enough is by feeling their chest, the back of their neck or their back. If they're nice and warm there, 
that's the most important thing. So not hands, not limbs, just the torso. That said, I feel like personally, if I had freezing cold hands or a freezing cold head, then I might find it a bit uncomfortable to sleep. And that's why we are now using a heater to just make the room more comfortable. If you saw my video of how to dress a baby, you'll know that last year we didn't use a heater because we didn't have a very good one and we couldn't figure out how to keep the temperature constant. But now that we've figured out how to keep the temperature constant without having to worry about it, we are using a heater. When it comes to what type of heater you want in the room, you're gonna to wanna to choose one that's nice and safe. So an oil heater is meant to be a good safe option. Uh, it's not too hot to touch. If it falls over, it's not like an electric bar heater where anything is gonna catch on fire. The ideal sleeping temperature for babies, toddlers is meant to be 18 degrees. That's meant to be perfect. That sounds, that might sound a little chilly to some. Um, I know a lot of mums who have the temperature set quite a bit higher, um, but apparently people in general sleep better when the air is a little bit cool. And I would kind of believe that because I know for me, I tend to sleep really well in the winter when the air is cool, but my body is snug. So it's probably the same for babies too. So the aim for using heater, you don't need to make it like toasty, warm and stifling because you're still using the sleeping bag and the clothing for the baby to be nice and snug. The heater is just to take the crispness off the air and to keep the temperature constant so that you can put them in one set of clothing at the beginning of the night and then you don't have to worry. You know they're gonna be warm. Honestly, using a heater for the past two weeks has taken away so much anxiety for me for, for Jed sleeping. I used to think around, you know, mid morning, oh my goodness, is he freezing now? Is he, you know, is he super cold? Or now I just know, no, he's fine. His room is a constant temperature. He's fine and he's comfortable. This room is about nine square meters and we have a seven fin oil heater. I'll link it in the description box below. We're happy with it. So if you're looking for a recommendation, just check out that link below. You can get heaters where you can actually like type in the temperature you want it to be set to. So you can hit 18 degrees and it will take care of the rest. But those digital heaters can be a little bit more pricey. If you're after a less expensive option, I recommend this one. Okay, so what you do with this, you plug this into the wall and then you plug your heater into here and on here you just set the temperature that you want it to be. I've got mine set to 17 degrees. When the temperature in the room drops to 16 point, sorry, what drops to 16, then this thing will turn on my heater. And when the temperature in the room reaches 17 again, it will turn off the heater and so on and so forth. It continues through the night. It turns my heater on and off as needed. So that means the room's always gonna be between 16 and 17 degrees. I hope that this has helped you in some way. So my recommendation would be if your room gets below about 15, 16 degrees, probably just cut out the hassle, get yourself a heater in conjunction with the sleeping bag. Take the edge of coldness off the room, but don't make it too toasty. Um, yeah, that would be how I would go about it. That's what seems to be working for us the best. And yeah, if you think that I can help you with any questions, like I said, I'm no expert, but I'll happily answer anything if you think I can help you, please let me know. Like if you are after our favorite sleeping bags or anything like that, just let me know. Please give the video a like if you found it helpful. And if you'd like to watch any of my other mum content, I've got all sorts of other videos. So be sure to check that out and hit subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.